Hi everybody, uh, it's Christina and I'm going to go over um, Biology 233 Human Anatomy Physiology Exercise 38A Enzymes and Factors Affecting a Reaction Rate. And so I'm going to just kind of walk you through the lab. Um, I've gone through and highlighted some things I think are important. And then at the end, I will give a little demo on the whiteboard about enzyme concentration versus substrate concentration. Okay, so enzymes are just protein molecules. They have a really complex three-dimensional structure and they're folded in odd shapes to create an active site. And because they work in, um, in most animal cells, um, the experiments we're gonna be talking about are, are occurring in um, mammal cells. Uh, changes in temperature, pH, um, and concentrations of enzymes and substrates can affect uh, how products are made. So if we were in the lab, we would be doing these experiments where we put uh, catalase, the enzyme catalase, that's our... Um, the enzyme we're looking at today, and it would break down into water and oxygen, and so oxygen would be getting released, and then we'd be able to measure how much oxygen was released, and that would tell us how active that enzyme was. So here's just a review of some terms. So we're going to look at three different variable conditions um, and see how they affect this enzyme catalase um, and so temperature is the first one. And so for each enzyme, uh, it usually has a temperature range that works really good for it. And so remember that we are looking at living cells. And so um, think about the temperature that is normal for your body. And that's kind of probably gonna be optimal. Here are the three variable conditions that we are looking at um, when we look at temperature. So you would have one that would be in um, an ice water beaker, and then you have one that's going to be in water on a hot plate, and you have one that's just left kind of at body temperature in an incubator. And so you can read through the processes a little bit and just kind of make yourself familiar with um, what we would have done if you were in class. And it tells you in a couple of places to mix the contents of your tube. So think about why you would need to mix up your enzyme and your substrate together. All right, so in the table, uh, we've given you the data. And so we've given you all of this data, so you just uh, follow these directions, follow these directions. You're going to fill out the rest of your table and then you're going to use that information to uh, infer some characteristics um, or the process of what happened to your enzyme and your substrate. And so here's a chart. You're just going to write in on the chart for thinking about um, body cells, remember, living cells what would be the most optimum temperature. And so here, pay attention to your X and Y axes. So on the Y axis, we have reaction rate. And then on the X axis, or do I have that backward, X and Y? Look at your axes. <laughs> and as the temperature increases, what happens uh, to the reaction rate? How successful is that enzyme as the temperature increases? So here are your um, experimental conditions. So you have test tubes with a pH of 4, 6, 7, and 8 in it. And once again, you are just basically um, at, different, at those different pHs, you are putting your enzymes in and you're seeing which one liberates the most oxygen. And that's going to tell you which was the most efficient um, and active. Uh, variable condition. Again, just fill in your table and then use these values to answer the questions down below. 
So there's a great chart in your lecture notes. So lecture notes, page 29 of digest digestion chapter that has a great table that shows all of the digestive and urinary hormones and enzymes and you can find both trypsin and pepsin listed there okay um our last uh, experimental condition is effective enzyme concentration enzymes we're going to be adding more enzymes to a container with a set amount of substrate and so imagine if you have 10 enzymes being dumped into a bucket, but you only have um, five pieces of substrate there for them to work on. Once the substrate is gone, the reaction rate is going to completely fall off. We won't have a reaction rate anymore because there's no substrate to be acted upon. And so that's pretty much what this experiment is getting at. So here are your variable conditions. You have a test tube with zero drops of enzyme. You have a test tube with one drop, a test tube with three drops, and a test tube with five drops um, with the same concentration of substrate in each one. Again, fill out the table and answer some questions that follow. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the effect of substrate concentration on enzyme activity. So in the last experiment, we had um, a set amount of substrate, but we kept adding more enzyme, and uh, we saw an increase in reaction rate proportional to time. And so <clears throat> if we have, you know, t say 10 enzymes in a bucket, and we add tons and tons, you know, a hundred pieces of substrate in there, we're never going to get our substrate or our enzyme substrates to work faster than what the, the top rate of the enzyme can do. All right. So if we have our jar and we have our little amount of substrates and so our substrate are the little black triangles and our enzyme are the little Pac-Mans. If I have four substrates and three enzymes in there my enzymes can break it down at a certain pace so I have time going this way and reaction rate going up and so I can kind of do make one product in a little bit you know this one can hook with this one and then I can do another one if I want it can release maybe it turns that into a little product and then it can release and go on to that one but it can only do that so fast so if I put a whole bunch more black triangles in here, I can't ever get these three enzymes that are in here, or the two activated enzymes and the one enzyme that hasn't been activated yet, because maybe it hasn't bumped into the molecule of hydrochloric acid or whatever it needs. Um, okay, now we're active, so it can work. Um, there, it, there's only so many times that this enzyme can go join with all of these substrates to turn them into our little products up here. And so it kind of levels off. No matter how many little black substrates I put in here or how much more substrate I put in, I can't ever get the reaction rate to go higher. And so that's what this last kind of thought question is asking you. Um, this over here is the, whoops, sorry, is the reaction rate, how much oxygen is uh, produced, and on the uh, bottom axis, we have our, how many little black triangles are we adding. So think about which spot, which column, A, B, or C, 
um, shows best what happens when um, you keep adding substrate, but the amount of enzyme stays the same. And uh, that's it for this lab. Please email me if you have any questions. Thanks.